On today's episode of Monday Maps, you're going to learn how to quickly and easily create map animations inside of Google Earth Studio and then bring those animations inside of Adobe After Effects to do some very basic motion graphics compositing work. It's really, really fun. I'm going to break it down step by step so it's easy to follow. If you do want to follow along, you're going to need access to Google Earth Studio. You're going to need the Google Chrome browser and, of course, a copy of Adobe After Effects. And I'd love to see the animations that you create. So if you do create something, please share it with me. Just tag me at Doing Loves Video. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. I'm a huge fan of Skillshare because I'm a huge fan of lifelong learning. And the great thing about Skillshare is they have a ton of useful content for Adobe After Effects, map making, and 3D animation. It's all ad free, and they're constantly adding new premium content to the site. They've got a ton of great After Effects content from the king of After Effects, Jake Bartlett. He has a really great class called Animating with Ease. He really dives into the details of how to properly use speed and value graphs. I've also been dipping my toe into the wonderful world of Blender 3D, and they have a great intro course on here from Southern Shady 3D called Your First 3D Animation. It's a lot of fun. It's a great intro to do character animation. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, so for the first step, we're creating our map animation inside of Google Earth Studio. Now, if this is your first time using the program, you need to request access. So just go click on that big blue Try Earth Studio button. And then uh, generally from what I hear, it takes about a day to get approval. I've never heard of anybody not being approved. So don't worry about that. Okay, so I could create a blank project from scratch and set everything up manually, but that would make the tutorial like 40 minutes and we want to make life easy here. So if you click on the little drop down menu, there are some quick start template projects and there are five in total. And these are, you know, common animations that you might want to create when you're creating a map animation like zooms, orbits, uh, point to point, spiral, really cool stuff. I think there's five in total. I'm going to go ahead and select orbit and I'm going to click on this start button. This is going to bring me to like this wizard thing that makes it very easy. I just enter in the location, adjust the parameters, and it's going to automatically keyframe them and make everything beautiful and perfect. So I'm going to choose uh, Mont Blanc. This is like the tallest mountain in France. Please don't choose the same location. I want you to choose a location that you like. And it can be anything from like an individual building. It can be a monument. It can be a different mountain or a city. Um, you'll still be able to follow along with this tutorial because I break everything down step by step. You don't have to choose the same location, so um, don't worry about that. Okay, I'm going to click the next arrow. Now you can see I've got this um, preview window here. It's orbiting around the mountain, but it's much, much, much too close. So I can adjust these parameters here. I have radius, altitude, target altitude, and start heading. So I'm just going to bring the radius way out. Let's see how far out we can go. Ooh, we can go pretty far. Maybe something like that. How far out do I want to go? Now I'm going to change the altitude because I want a little bit of a background here because I'm going to be putting uh, like a big, te that big text element at the top here. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click the next button. Now I can change the length of this animation. I'm going to bring it down to 30 seconds. That's going to speed it up. And ideally, I think it actually will loop. Now when I hit the little check mark button, it's going to set up the project. And now look at that. Beautiful. We have a project. We have a bunch of keyframes. It's looking super smooth. So if you're new to Google Earth Studio, like, and you try to create this and you don't have much um, animation knowledge, it would take forever. So these quick start projects are really great. They, the, all, all five of them are really, really good looking animations and they make life very easy, even a good starting point. So I urge you to check them out. And you know what? I hate looking at frame numbers. If I go click up here, I can look at time code. And that's pretty much it, right? I could go ahead and render this out. Well, not quite. Since I'm going to be compositing motion graphics elements inside of Adobe After Effects, I need to add some track points inside of Google Earth Studio because um, essentially when I render this out, I'm rendering out like a flat plane. It's not a true 3D project that I'm going to be um, you know, flying a camera around the actual world. So when I render this out, it's just a flat plane. And then I'm going to be adding in 3D elements that make it appear that they're in the scene. So what I need to do is I have to have these track points that give the, the actual location so it makes it look like they're in the world. So we do that via track points. Now you can add a track point by just simply right clicking on the map here. You can right click and right here it says set track point. You can do that, but that's not quite as precise as using this view over here, this viewport, which is the top viewport. You can change the viewport here. If you don't even see this, you can go to view, multi-view, and select two viewports, 
and then you'll be able to see this really cool this really cool angle here. So I'm gonna go right over here and there's already something here. That's actually the camera target. So what the camera target is, it's like you can set a camera target and then as you move uh, your camera around, it's gonna snap to that target. So that's really, really helpful. However, I wanna create a track point. I'm gonna do it right here. I can zoom in here um, and it's not going to change my keyframes or anything as long as I don't add any keyframes. So even if I start to shuttle back again, you can see it doesn't, doesn't change anything. So I'm gonna zoom in way close here, right click right on there and do set track point. And now this brings up the track points panel and it shows me the information here. I might just wanna make sure that the altitude is precise. So if we Google this, you can see that that's pretty much close to the actual altitude and it's actually near the peak of the mountain. I can uh, click here to rename it. And one other thing I need to do, very technical, I'm gonna go over here and click this little menu button and select set as local origin. So uh, you can also do that just by right clicking here, set as local origin. Now what this is gonna do is there's two different ways that you can kind of control the coordinate system. When you bring this into Adobe After Effects, it controls where, I think it controls where your anchor point and your positioning is gonna be. So it defaults to a coordinate system called global, which essentially is like your origin point is the center of the earth. So when you're moving objects around on the surface of the earth, your position parameters are insanely high and it's very hard to work with some elements. So if you switch that to local coordinate system, um, you can specify the world origin to a track point. So my world origin is essentially gonna be at the top of the mountain here. So when I uh, am moving elements around, my parameters aren't gonna be these wild numbers. And essentially I'll be able to find elements like when I add lights or other elements, they'll be easier to control. Okay, so now I've got the track points. I've added my local origin to my track point here. I'm ready to render this out. So I'm gonna go click on the render button here and I'll rename it Mont Blanc. I can render this out as a JPEG image sequence or a video. I'm gonna keep this on the image sequence. I could change the parameters here. Let's make this bad boy Ultra HD 4K. I specify a destination and I have to give um, them permission to access my local drive. And then down here in advance, this is where you specify the coordinate space. So again, it defaults to global. I'm gonna switch this to local. If I didn't have that track point set as the local origin, it's gonna give me a quick error message. It won't even let me switch it to local. It's gonna say you have to set a track point as your local origin. Everything else is fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and render this out. Okay, so now it's rendering it out. And one little caveat about this way of rendering is if I go over, click on another tab, and go back, it says, heads up, we've paused the render. Using other graphics intensive applications or changing tabs in Chrome while rendering can cause faulty renders. So it automatically pauses it. So you can click on continue rendering. That might be one benefit to using the cloud um, render for video is that it renders it in the cloud and it's gonna give you a notification when it's done. You can automatically download it from your cloud renders as an MP4 file. However, I've noticed it's a little buggy and you can get more errors with those. All right, the next step is to bring this inside of Adobe After Effects. And the really cool thing about this workflow is that I don't have to do anything inside of Adobe After Effects like creating comps or importing. All I need to do is run the script file that is included with the export. So to do that, you go to File, Scripts, Run Script File, and then simply navigate to where you exported the files and you'll notice a .jsx script file. I'll click on that. All right, and that script really did everything for us. You can see it set up this comp with all the assets here. There's a camera. If I click on you to show all the keyframes here, you can see this camera is animated, matching the movement of my camera instead of Google Earth Studio. It imported the image sequence as a clip, and then it created this null object from our track point, and it even added this text layer, which is attached to the null object. So, so if you created like 10 different track points inside of Google Earth Studio, when you import those in, it'll give you 10 null objects and 10 text elements. Normally I just go through and I delete all the text elements because I'm usually adding like map markers that I attach to those null objects. However, here I am using a text element. So all I need to do now is reformat this because you can see the formatting is not there at all. So you, you can see how this is being comped together. This image sequence is not um, a 3D layer. It's just a flat 2D layer. However, the camera is matching the movement of the original animation. So now any, any motion graphics that I comp in and attach to those track points or the null objects, it's gonna automatically give you the illusion that we have elements in our map here. 
So let's do some formatting on our text layer here. So I'm gonna grab the text element, I'm gonna hit S for scale, and you can see it's way too big. So I'm gonna bring that down to 400, and now we've got something more manageable. Now I'm gonna use this little 3D widget to um, you know, move it around a little bit. So first, I'm gonna flip it up on the X rotation. So I'm gonna grab the rotation here, I'm gonna hold Shift, and I'm gonna bring that to 90. You can see the little 90 here. So now, now it's looking like we're more you know, that's how it's supposed to properly be. It's still looking a little too low. So let's grab here, position, let's bring that up. Okay, that's looking good. However, uh, you know, it's in place, it's a good size. Actually, let's bring the size down a little bit more, 350. So the size is looking good. Uh, it's just looking a little flat. You know, this is a 3D animation, so I wanna make it more 3D. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some extrusion to this, um, you know, throw some light on it, make it, make it, pop a little more. Well, one thing I could do real quick is just grab the opacity of my image sequence and bring that down to 90, make it just pop a little more. Okay, so for this, um, first thing I need to do is switch my 3D renderer uh, because right now it's such a classic 3D. I can switch it over here, switch it to Cinema 4D, or you can go to Composition, Composition Settings and then under 3D Renderer, you can switch the renderer right here to Cinema 4D and that will enable extrusion. Now if I open up the text element down here, you can see there's now geometry options. If I go here, now I have all these extrusion options. All right, so now if I just bring the extrusion depth up, you can see it's extruding. However, it's just all washed out and it just looks like garbage now, so I need to add lights. So I'm gonna right click, go to new light, and first I'm gonna add an ambient light. Now you can see as I move the intensity around, it's gonna change a little bit. I'm gonna to need to tweak this a little bit more later because I'm gonna add a second light, which is gonna be our spotlight. So we'll go to new light and we'll go to spot, bring the intensity of this one to 100. It adds it um, in where, you know, near where our track point was. However, I need to move it around a little bit more. So it's all funky, you know, it's all set up a little bit weird. So to get this to snap right to our text, I'm gonna pick whip this and then shift click or, uh, or shift release on the text. That's gonna snap it to the text here. We, however, still cannot see any light on the thing. So I'm gonna grab the Z and I'm gonna reposition it. Now you can see it's gonna start to light it up because the, the point of interest is now. Okay, so now we're starting to see some text, a little bit more lighting there. I'm gonna bring this up. Here we go, bring it up. And now I can rotate this down, make it more like a sunlight scenario here. Okay, that's looking better. I'm gonna go back to my text settings and geometry. Let's let's bring the bevel depth up way, way high to 10 and then set it to concave. Whoa. All right, there we go. And now I can just play with the intensity of some of these. So let's bring this down a little bit, maybe to 70. All right, let's render it out and take a look. Okay, so there you have it. That was a very cool project. I just love working with Google Earth Studio, especially when you can bring that tracking data inside of Adobe After Effects. It's such a cool workflow. Uh, so many different opportunities to create really cool, interesting maps. And again, if you did happen to follow along with the tutorial and you created some cool animation, please share it with me. Just tag me at Boonla's video. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. I think that's it. And if you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It does indeed help my channel. If you want to check out more map videos, I have a Monday Maps playlist. You can check that out down in the video description. Or if you just want to check out more map stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you'll be updated every time I post a new map video. See you in the next one.